It's been about 200 years since those big earthquakes struck the New Madrid region in 1811-1812. The uh, available information about those earthquakes is somewhat fragmentary given the uh, time that they occurred at, but fortunately we know a lot more about earthquakes from the experience of having some magnitude 4 and 5s in the central and eastern United States and having some bigger ones, some magnitude 6 and 7s in the western U.S. So the question is, what have we learned in the last several decades about earthquakes and how we can prepare for them? The biggest lesson that's been learned is, first of all, earthquake education is important because people know how to react when an earthquake occurs. So one important technique for preventing the loss of life in an earthquake is to have earthquake drills. And these have been conducted uh, throughout California, in Oregon, in Washington State, in Utah, and many other uh, earthquake-prone regions. Earthquake drills are just a way of reminding people of what they need to do in the event of a large earthquake and practicing uh, those maneuvers so they become a bit second nature. The main effect that causes the loss of life and damage to structures is strong earthquake ground shaking. With the earth shaking so violently, many buildings are either damaged or completely collapse. And we've seen this in the earthquake in Haiti, where buildings that had been designed mainly to sustain the winds and the pressure from hurricanes were unable to stand the strong ground shaking from the Haiti earthquake. The result was horrific. The buildings completely collapsed and in some cases pancaked, killing hundreds of thousands of people as a result. There's a lot to be learned from earthquakes that have occurred in the western United States, in southern California, in northern California, and in the state of uh, Washington regarding earthquake preparedness and good quality engineering. What we found in those past earthquakes was that even structures that we thought were pretty well designed were insufficiently prepared for the kind of strong ground shaking you get from a magnitude 6 or 7 earthquake. Entire columns burst and highway overpasses collapsed, uh, really raising the alarm and causing people to realize that earthquake preparedness requires a high level of engineering design and a lot of retrofitting. Now this sort of building that I'm standing next to, for example, is a masonry building. It's more than 100 years old. Uh, in its design, it's very similar to the kinds of buildings that are very common in the central and eastern United States. And such a building has not been designed with earthquakes in mind, especially when the magnitude gets up to magnitude 6 and 7. This kind of strong ground shaking can easily cause fractures, uh, resulting in the total collapse of a building of this type. So in the western United States we've had to make the decision to replace a lot of these buildings or retrofit them, especially if they uh, house critical facilities like a school or a hospital or uh, a factory with a lot of people working there. In the central and eastern U.S. each community will have to assess its own risk and make some community decisions whether or not there are some structures that need to be retrofitted. And that will be a decision that will be made with engineers and leaders working together to make a candid assessment of the earthquake hazard.